Hello everybody, this is Spirited Senior and I've got some news from Puppet String News and let's begin shall we? 25 tons of fentanyl from China seized inside Mexico. Isn't that something? After Trump asked them to please stop shipping their fentanyl here. This is Breitbart. Breitbart reports this. The Secretariat of the Navy of Mexico has reported a major fentanyl seizure to be of multi-ton in Mexico. Yes, in the port of Mexico, as a matter of fact. Yes. According to a government spokesman, the seizure was a result of a joint operation led by the Mexican naval elements of the 10th Naval Zone and Lazaro Cardenas Customs Enforcement personnel as reported by local media. This, this place is located in western Mexico and has a stretch of coastline along the Pacific Ocean. Hmm. That's easy shipping, isn't it? It's now probably safe to say that China may be directly connected to the problems at our borders and may even be involved with Mexican cartels as Mexican authorities have seized 25 tons of fentanyl that came from China. What do you think of that, people? You know, when are we going to smarten up on that border? Okay? Just when? If fentanyl totaling 25 tons or 51,000 pounds has been seized in Mexico, it's very likely this shipment of fentanyl was targeting American soil. No kidding. You think China hasn't been trying to do this to us for years? Wake up, people. China's not friendly towards America, okay? This one belt, one road crap they want. Yeah, we're all going to be prisoners in their one belt, one road. The Silk Road of Death. Thank you very much. It's now probably safe to say that China may be directly connected to the problems at our border. Yes, this is true. We should very likely consider this a possibility, this possibility an act of war by China with Mexican authorities seizing this very, very large shipment of fentanyl from China. As everyone knows, fentanyl is very connected to China and could techni techn technically be considered a weapon of war or mass destruction. And why not? You know, why not? This is exactly that. I mean, they've got their Chinese people under control. Except for Hong Kong. That's a whole different story with Hong Kong, though. But I mean, they've got... They, they, you, don't, you don't see anybody complaining over there. They don't dare say any word. It's communistic, okay? There's no freedom there. Please. Curious if this discovery by Mexican authorities with this fentanyl foot payload from China may be directly related to Trump increasing tariffs and trade tensions with China. Why is a large shipment of fentanyl being discovered in our neighbor of in our neighbor of Mexico from China in known cartel territory? Gee, I wonder why. Because a cartel will get it done. And across the borders. You know, the cartel, the ones who are paying Pelosi, Adam Schiff, uh, Brown. Is there anybody I missed? Oh, yes, Maxine, Waters. They're all getting paid by the cartel. They've already mentioned that. When El Chapo talked, he said they were paying them. And I'm sure he wasn't made to say that. He was already in jail. So people, wake up. Duck. Moving on. Georgia Appeals Court Judge Stephen Goss found dead behind his home with gunshot wound. Oh no. 
10 bucks. No, 100 bucks. This is related to Clinton somehow. Nobody ends up, everybody ends up dead. I'm telling you. Washington Times report. An appeal judge in Georgia was found Saturday shot dead behind his Albany home, but officials do not believe it was a homicide. Right. They must be people really stupid out here. Okay? Albany police were dispatched to the residence and found Judge Stephen Goss, 60, in a wooded area dead from a gunshot wound, news outlets reported. Doggerty County District Attorney Greg Edwards said the investigation is ongoing, but it doesn't appear to be a homicide. Somebody shoot that bastard, okay? Goss was appointed by then Governor Nathan Deal to serve as a judge on the Court of Appeals of Georgia in August of 2018. Before that, he served as a Superior Court judge in Albany for nearly 20 years. A statement from Chief Justice Harold D. Melton said Goss brought dignity and compassion to the delivery of justice all across this great state and was known nationally for his work on mental health and substance abuse treatment programs. We have another one of those strange deaths in America where a gunshot wound is involved. As a Georgia Appeals Court judge, Stephen Goss has been found dead behind his home with a gunshot wound. Now, you only have to wonder what is going on with the death of this Georgia state judge who died of a gunshot wound where authorities don't believe it was a homicide. <laughs> so that alone makes the killing of this judge, Georgia judge already questionable, isn't it? Because it looks like we once again have another so-called suicide on our hands with another gunshot wound. When is it going to stop? Okay? The death of this judge follows the very likely same cause of death as we had a couple of months ago with the deaths of two former state senators from Oklahoma and Arkansas. Arkansas. Good state, Arkansas. Yeah. Where the former Arkansas state senator Linda Collin Smith and a former state senator from Oklahoma was found dead exactly the same way. And it's not homicide. No. No. Probably shot himself three or four times, too. By the way, Linda Collins Smith was investigating child trafficking in Arkansas. You're not going to stop it from coming out. You can kill some of us, but you can't kill us all. It's unbelievable. Moving on, people. 78,000 Mexican nationals arrested by federal agents in 2018. 78,000. And these are the criminals, I believe. True pundit. Uh, the total number of federal arrests of Mexican nationals Living in the U.S. states now exceeds the total number of federal arrests in American citizens, the federal data reveals. I like that. They got us outnumbered for crimes. Isn't that lovely? A new report by the Department of Justice finds that in 2018, the number of Mexican nationals arrested for federal crimes exceeded the number of American citizens who were arrested for federal crimes by about 8,000 arrests. Oh, they're just all friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Until it's one of your family members that gets shot. For example, more than 78,000 federal arrests of Mexicans were made last year. Compare that to roughly 70,500 federal arrests made of American citizens in the same year. Over 20 years, the number of federal arrests made of Mexican nationals in the U.S. has soared 
by 175%, while federal arrests of Americans grew only by 10%. That's a big difference, isn't it, guys? Big difference, you know, like, I don't care. You know, they're here illegally. They got to go. This week, it was already revealed by the DOJ that illegal aliens in America made up to 64% of federal arrests in 2018, which comes along with 200 plus percent increase in illegal aliens committing federal crimes since 1998. With that being said, we are starting to see the, sorry, bug. <laughs> Starting to see the arrest numbers now surfacing with this information about the following was revealed as Mexican nationals made up 78,000 of the total federal arrests made across America in 2018. It is now more clear that in America that illegal aliens and Mexican nationals make up for more of the crime in America as illegal aliens and Mexican nationals are responsible for well over half of all federal arrests in Canada over the last year. You know, and all these gang members that go around killing people just for the fun of it and cutting them up and, you know, and other things I will probably can't say anyways. Um, when, when are we going to get real about this? When are we going to get real? You know? It's happening in Canada too. It's happening in Canada too. So, you know, like I always look to the U.S. to see what's coming up, basically. It's happening in Canada also. It's sad. It's really, really sad. Jeez, here's something. No. Oh, here we go. Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates revealed as a passenger on Jeffrey Epstein's Lolita Express, people. <laughs> oh, oh, the truth is beautiful, isn't it? True Pundit reports, former Microsoft chairman Bill Gates may not be able to escape Epstein. Gates, after all, <laughs> after it was revealed last week that the billionaire traveled with Jeff Epstein on his infamous Lolita Express Boeing 727 in 2013. Four years after Epstein served time for pedophilia. So Epstein was still up to it, wasn't he? According to the Daily Mail, flight records reveal that Gates flew with Epstein from Teterboro Airport in New Jersey to Palm Beach in March 1st, 2013. One of the few flights that year were pilot by Larry Vinskotsky, I forget, I don't know how to pronounce that name, sorry, recorded the name of a passenger. Sorry about messing up your, lay, your name, Vis, Viskotsky. A major name has dropped as not only being involved with Jeffrey Epstein, but is now named as a passenger on the Lita Express. Not only is this a big name, but it's a major name. Let's not forget Prince Andrew. As Microsoft billionaire Bill Gates has been revealed tonight as a passenger on Epstein's Lolita Express dating back as far as 2013 in this newsreel. The question is, what was Bill Gates doing as a passenger on Epstein's Petal Island, Zorro Ranch Lolita Express Airlines? But it's an easy answer to the question, knowing Epstein has been arrested before his questionable suicide for child trafficking. Yes, very questionable suicide, and I still believe he's alive. 
As we also know, a French modeling agency provided Epstein's network with 1,000 child models as young as 12 years old people. 12 years old. By the way, the travel continues because isn't Bill Gates a known voice against President Trump? Oh, yes, he is. Why, why do you think so? <laughs> Who will be named next after Bill Gates has been revealed as a passenger on Jeffrey Epstein's Lolita Express? Now, isn't that something? I mean, really. That is really something. And with something, I don't know. You've already heard about, but it's back in the news. Three sex offenders, three sex offenders discovered involved with Drag Queen Story Hour in Texas. Yeah, they're all in Texas for some reason, I don't know. And Texas is a very red state, I don't get it. This is from the Post Times. Over the past year, the Austin Public Library in te Texas has allowed a sex offender to read to children during drag queen story time. I'll bet they just want them to sit on their laps, too. A pro-family organization has learned. <laughs> that <clears throat> this is the latest development in a series of related findings this year. At least three sex offenders have been exposed in Texas after having participated in drag queen story time programs that seek to teach children about gender fluidity and give them queer role models through reading events in public libraries now why do they need queer role models they don't need that they don't need these ugly people getting dressed up looking like clowns fools idiots you know who needs that? David Richardson, known as Miss Kitty Litter, probably shits himself every day, was arrested for prostitution in 1996. Mass Resistance, a pro-family organization based in Massachusetts, reported. After the group exposed the criminal record on August 8, Austin's LGBT committee passed a resolution seeking to protect the story hour and the creation of more programs like it. So more kids can be abused. Okay. Drag queens are men who dress up in women's clothes while often wearing exaggerated makeup, usually for entertainment purposes. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? They're sick deviants, okay? The secret of drag queen story hour, secrets of drag queen story hour are now being revealed, even though we already know child serial sex predators are being revealed as part of the drag queen story hour across America. However, it looks like more serial sex offenders are being revealed as part as Drag Queen Story Hour across America, with now three more <laughs> drag queens part of Drag Queen Story Hour being discovered in Texas. So, stop it! Stop this Drag Queen Story Hour! And what kind of idiot parents take their children to go see something like that? You are a bunch of idiots. Jeez. Also, with the new reveal of these three serial sex offenders being revealed as part of this group in Texas, it has even been confirmed by a member of Drag Queen Story Hour who helped organize an event for drag queens to read with kids. Yes. That the goal of Drag Queen Story Hour is to groom very young children of the next generation. Yeah, to become more idiotic than this generation that's out now. What is wrong with you millennials? What is wrong with you? 
quit drinking the Kool-Aid. Damn it. Drag Queen Story Hour might not last much longer in America with all the dark secrets of its group coming to the surface in mass. Well, thank you very much for listening, and I think I will leave that there. And have a good day.